Welcome back to Cinema Wellman. I'm your host, David. And today we're here to close the book on 2022. We're going to look at the top 10 and the bottom five that were screened here in the month of December. And we screened a total of 64 films in December. And believe it or not, 31 received the thumbs up, which is 48% of the total. So um, either I watched a lot of really good movies or I was feeling uh, generous because of the holidays. Um, and also the top 10 this month is very current. Seven of the 10 films are from 2022. So it was a great month of movies and except for where we're going to begin. And we always begin with that bottom five. I cheated a little and I have a tie for number five. Number five at a tie, 55 Days at Peking from 1963 and Khartoum from 1966. So it seems like there are several surefire ways to get yourself on the bottom five here on the monthly list. Um, most romantic comedies, movies that treat women poorly, uh, movies that treat minorities poorly, movies featuring blackface, um, yellowface, any of those despicable racist kind of things, and movies dealing with the entire colonization story. Um, spoiler alert, when it comes to colonization, the white people are the evil ones. Um, these two films tied for fifth and the bottom five because I could not differentiate them. They are both uh, essentially the same movie to me. It's overblown, epic, old Hollywood garbage. Um, Runtime, the two of them together was almost five hours. One dealt with the Boxer Rebellion in 1900, the other in late 1880s Sudan. And both feature Charlton Heston. Um, maybe I have an anti-Charlton Heston thing. Other than, you know, Omega Man, Soylent Green, Planet of the Apes. Other than that, I don't have any use for him. Let's move on. Number four in the bottom five this month. My love for Richard Linklater is well documented. Um, and yet I can't get beyond these Ethan Hawke, Julie Delpy movies. Number four is Before Sunset, made in 2004. I actually liked Before Sunrise in 1995. I remember watching it with a friend, and we both thought it was it was innovative. It was it's, it's essentially the two of them, Hawk and Delpy. That's it. The whole movie, their dialogue and and their chemistry and, and all of that stuff, um, and it was well done. And what I didn't want were two more of pretty much the same exact movie. Uh, this was enough, and I'm done with. Ethan Hawke as well. So <laughs> Charlton Heston out, Ethan Hawke out. Number three is from 1969 and it's titled Last Summer. And the only reason I watched this is because it earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress Catherine Burns. It was rated X upon its release for reasons I just don't understand. And this is a total mess. I hate movies where um, the popular, attractive, you know, rich people target purposely someone who's inferior and they try to mess with their lives and things like that. And that's what this is. It, and it happens more often than you think in movies. And it's really unappealing to watch. I don't know who enjoys watching those types of films. Probably the bullies that they're, they're made about. The, I, I can't imagine anyone else liking it. Um, the, uh, the, the trio of people that uh, torment Catherine Burns' character, uh, Barbara Hershey, Richard John Boy Thomas, and Bruce Willard Davidson. Um, they are the trio, and they're all bad, and watching this made me angry, and the best part of this was that it only took up 95 minutes of my time. Let's move on. Number two of the bottom five for December of 2022 was a film titled 222. <laughs> Stick with me here. From 2017, um, the protagonist in this garbage is, and then we're supposed to like him, I guess, is a air traffic controller. And in the opening sequence, he purposely pulls this hot dog move to show off that almost has two full jetliners collide. Um, why he wasn't put in prison immediately after that, I don't know. That annoyed me. Um, it tries to be some kind of Groundhog Day thriller, uh, but it doesn't work. IMD puts it this way. A man's life is derailed when an ominous pattern of events repeats itself in exactly the same manner every day, ending at precisely 2.22 p.m. Boring. You're boring. 
Let's move on. The worst film screened in December of 2022 here at Cinema Wellman is from 2018, and it's titled How It Ends. Now, later in the top 10, I'm going to talk about a movie titled How It Ends. And I think that, and I love that one, obviously, because it's in my top 10. Um, I think that movie titles should be like uh, horse, horse, uh, racehorse names, and you can't have the same one. You, you have a movie, you kind of put that in the books, and no one else lets you repeat it. Um, unless it's a sequel, then it's yours, or, you know, a reboot, whatever you want to do with that kind of junk. Um, but I think that you should have movies that don't have the same titles. I once watched, uh, I watched How It Ends back-to-back -back with the other How It Ends in uh, consecutive days. I once watched two different films titled Clash, in the same day, one from Egypt and one from Iran, and um, neither one of them were about the band. I was kind of upset about that. So back to this garbage. It takes place during an apocalypse and features character struggling to meet up with his pregnant wife who is thousands of miles away, and I've already spoken about that nonsense here at Cinema Wellman. Um, the following is from IMDb. Quote, does not explain or attempt to explain the cause of the apocalypse. No characters even care or question it. Well, if the characters don't care, how am I supposed to care about this stuff? Now, that's it for the bottom five. Let's move on to the top 10. And I'm, um, again, cheating here. I don't have ties for, for uh, the, you know, the 10th best or whatever like that. But I do want to mention quickly two films that were very close to making the top 10 this month. One is titled Diamantino from 2018 and the other is from 2019, and it's a documentary titled Tough Guy, The Bob Probert Story. Now, Diamantino is a Portuguese sports fantasy movie that features a Cristiano Ronaldo-type soccer player who misses a, a penalty kick in the World Cup that it could have had Portugal win the World Cup, and he misses it, and he is disgraced and all that stuff. Then he gets involved with a plot hatched by a political group to clone him in order to make Portugal great again, and it also involves soccer sequences where he plays on a field with gigantic fluffy puppies. You, you heard that correctly. I, I was in a bar waiting for some takeout with a friend of mine and telling him about this film. And the guy next to me actually introduces, I'm sorry, but can you tell me about this? What are you talking about? That's a movie. So I got to, I got to tell uh, a stranger about that film. It's wild. It's just like, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, tough Guy, the Bob Probert story, very informative and, and very heartbreaking. It's account of the life and times of hockey player Bob Probert. Uh, it's a must-see for hockey fans especially those that like to watch Proby play. Um, he was a talented young athlete who had his demons and the demons got the best of him. And we've heard that story before and we've seen it before in documentaries, but there was something about this that, that just touched me and made me feel really sad um, about what he was asked to do every night out on the ice with his fists. That's no way to make a living. Um, now, in most months, both of those, Diamantino and Tough Guy, uh, Bob Probert story, would have made the top 10. So that means that there must have been 10 other things that were just like, oh, oh my goodness, what am I watching here? And a lot of them are horror movies this month. So December is kind of a horror uh, month around here at, at uh, Cinema Wellman. I think the holidays bring that out. Um, all right, let's start. Here we go. Top 10. Uh, number 10. From 2022, Noah Baumbach's white noise. Now, sometimes when I'm watching a movie, I know right away whether that it's going to get a thumbs up or the dreaded bomb in my archive. Um, and if I leave, if I leave it blank, if it's not a thumbs up or a bomb, that means that it was, it was okay, but it didn't get all the way to me talking about it and mentioning it to people and recommending it to, to friends and family. And, and the bomb is self-explanatory. But sometimes I'm kind of caught in the middle. And White Noise was, was one of those. And as a matter of fact, it didn't make the top 10 uh, until a couple days after I, I watched it. Um, now, it, it, Noah Baumbach's movies are very unique. They're very original. Um, and they're sometimes puzzling. So don't feel bad if you watch one of his films and you're kind of scratching your head at the end. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. 
This cast, uh, the story I should mention, um, follows a family, Adam Driver, like John Oliver, I love Adam Driver, not as quite as obsessed as John Oliver is, uh, Greta Gerwig, um, and they got four really good kids, uh, child actors I'd not heard of, and, and they were all very good, and, the, and their family dynamic is, is believable, and it's really interesting that the family is so extended. There's, there's four kids, and they're from, I think, four different marriages that the two of them had. One of their, one of the kids is Gerwig and Driver's characters, and the other ones are from previous marriages. And so you get that kind of chaotic um, dynamic in the family. Don Cheadle is not a member of the family, but he's, he's in this, and he's fantastic. Don Cheadle is excellent. Um, I can't think of many things that I've seen him in that he, he didn't put out a great performance. Um, so this, this uh, story is about this family that is dealing with everyday life and an airborne toxic event. There are, uh, a train collides with a, tr a tractor trailer and releases this toxic gas into the air. So it's not quite an end of day story, but it has that little bit of an element. There's a little bit about um, what do we believe from the news? How should we react? Um, should we get out of here? Should we shelter in place? Who do we believe? Do we listen to friends? Do we listen to the news? Which news do we listen to? Um, it's, it's really very, very interesting. And the product placement in this film is just off the charts and it's totally done on purpose. So if you're watching this, don't get angry with the, pre it's obviously this is part of, the products are almost uh, a member of the cast. And it has to do with when the story is set, um, the height of consumerism and all of those things. Um, the closing credit sequence in this is one of my favorite closing credit sequences ever. It is phenomenal. So if you watch this movie and for some reason it, it bores you and you don't want to watch the end of it, please make sure you watch the end. Uh, the closing credit sequence. I, I had to rewind and watch it again to see what I missed. It's it's hard to describe as Noah Baumbach's films tend to be. Um, so see it yourself and uh, let me know what you think if you like it. I hope you do. Number nine on our list of the top 10 is a Dutch-Belgian war movie that chronicles the Battle of the Scheldt. And this is titled The Forgotten Battle. And this was recommended to me. I have a close friend who uh, tells me all the time, whenever I talk about movies with other people, he kind of stays out of the conversation and his catchphrase is, well, I'm not a movie guy. And he recommended this to me. So he knows who he is. He is a movie guy and I respect his movie opinion as much as I respect anybody else's movie opinion. Um, this, the Battle of the Scheldt was a series of military operations that saw the allied forces attempting to open up the waterways, the shipping routes to Antwerp. Um, epic battle lasted five weeks, involved over 225,000 troops. The special effects in this were dazzling and heart-stopping. Um, it gives the viewer a front row seat to uh, the chaos of war. Highly recommend this, especially if you're into war movies. Um, number eight on the top 10 this month is Smile. And this is a horror movie, and it is... Uh, as I mentioned, over half of the films in the top 10 are horror movies. In this film, Sosie Bacon, who is Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon's daughter, I did not know that, uh, she plays Rose Cotter, a doctor whose life begins to unravel after seeing a patient commit suicide in front of her. Rose's troubling past does not help as she you know, tries to sort all this stuff and she's questioning her sanity. The title comes from the fact that the individuals who are affected with this evil have this creepy vacant, extremely unsettling smile on their face before they commit their heinous deeds. As one critic stated, quote, this movie will ruin smiles forever. <laughs> That's a great line. That's a dandy. Um, I love the fact that they promoted this film by having uh, people go to baseball games and sit behind home plate with just the smile, not reacting to anything around them, just staring straight ahead with this smile. 
brilliant, brilliant advertising there. I'm not a big fan of the jump scare, and this one has a couple in it that I think are unneeded, but I also think there are enough regular scares uh, to keep you creeped out from start to finish. That's a good one. Number eight on the list is Smile. Number seven is from 2022, and it is Troll. It is a Norwegian kaiju film, if there is such a thing. Here's what IMDb says. Deep in the Dover Mountains, something gigantic wakes up after a thousand years in captivity. The creature destroys everything in its path and quickly approaches Oslo. Yep, that's kaiju. That's what it is. Um, turns out trolls are a real thing. Big deal in Scandinavia. I also watched Norway's Troll Hunter um, in December as well. Trolls, trolls, all kinds of trolls. Um, I preferred Troll to Troll Hunter for a couple of reasons. One was the actual story, and the other were the special troll effects. My favorite in Troll uh, was when the troll approaches and destroys a troll-themed amusement park. That's fantastic. No notes. Um, is this silly at times? Yeah. Yeah, I get, yeah, you got me. Um, but I've never shied away from silly, that's for sure. Number six on the list is titled Adult Swim Yule Log. Now, if you saw this, you're probably wondering to yourself, how is he going to describe this movie? Well, I honestly don't know where to start. Um, and for a change, IMDb is no help. Here's all IMDb has to say. Quote, there's just something comforting about sitting around a warm, cozy fire, end quote. Sounds like they didn't know where to begin either. This is a blood-drenched horror film that features both a serial killer who's controlled by his psychotic mother and a murderous log. Yes, you heard me correctly, a murderous log. I watched this Christmas night uh, after everyone went to sleep, and I have a feeling that I'm going to make that a tradition. This was wild. Even though the premise of a log flying out of a self-lighting fire to murder people is utterly preposterous, they actually explain why the log is so angry. They explain the preposterousness of the film and the basis of the film, which is something that Jurassic Park, uh, the latest Jurassic Park, didn't bother to do at all. Um, some of the photography is quite creative in this. Um, and you start out, I should have mentioned, you start out like it's a regular Yule log for, for a few minutes and you're listening to conversation, the crackling of the logs, and then it finally pulls out from, um, uh, it pulls out focus from the fire to the people sitting there and we get involved in who they are and, and then the murdering starts. Um, the, the cool thing about the photography is that sometimes the, because uh, this fireplace is in a, in a rustic cabin, of course, um, and the photographer, the, the cin cinematographer, director, filmmakers, whatever you want to say, um, they sometimes focus on the fire, but they move from time period to time period. And it kind of, sometimes it changes from uh, color to black and white. And you have, you're presuming it's from the fifties and you have young boys running around the cabin wearing like Davy Crockett hats. And, uh, it's, that part's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's not as silly as it may appear, although it is funny and it's really bloody. <laughs> it's like, that's all I can say. All right, let's go to number five. Totally different. A documentary from 2021 titled The Automat. Now, I'm not, an, I'm not old enough to remember uh, going to an automat, but, and that makes me sad. I think that um, it seems they were designed with me in mind. You've got uh, fresh cooked meals out of vending machines in a commissary style eatery. Uh, that sounds that sounds like me. The next best thing to actually going, I guess, is to watch this heartwarming documentary. Features a lot of people who did frequent automats, including archival footage of uh, and current interviews, uh, or they were current when the film was made, uh, with Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, Elliot Gould, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And Colin Powell. Now, obviously, some of those people have passed since the making of this mil film, but uh, hearing them talk about going to the automat when they were younger is very cool. It's a lovely little trip in a time machine back to a much simpler time where a cup of coffee cost a nickel and it came out of a dolphin's mouth. It's lovely. 
Number four on the list of the top 10 is from 2022, and it is titled The Sound of 007. So it's another documentary. This is a must. If you're a James Bond uh, film fan, if I think even music fans should, should see this. Um, the list of artists who have recorded a Bond song is quite impressive. Uh, we've got Tom Jones, Paul McCartney and Wings, Carly Simon, Duran Duran, Gladys Knight, Tina Turner, Sheryl Crow, Madonna, Chris Cornell, Jack White with Alicia Keys, um, Adele, and most recently, Billie Eilish. Um, well, the queen of Bond songs, of course, is Shirley Bassey, who sang the themes for Goldfinger, Diamonds Are Forever, and Moonraker. Hearing these talented musicians talk about how honored they were to be given the chance to sing a Bond song, how important that actually is to the music world, that was a lot of fun. Now, just like the movies themselves, not every song is a winner, but I can't hear Dame Shirley Bassey belt out Goldfinger without getting goosebumps, or Diamonds Are Forever for that matter. Jill St. John also gives me goosebumps, but that's a little different thing. Number three on the list, a uh, top 10 for the month of December, is titled How It Ends. And no, it's not that garbage post-apocalyptic How It Ends that I already spoke about. It's a different one from 2021. Um, this is the good one. Here's what IMDb says. In this feel-good apocalyptic comedy, Liza embarks on a hilarious journey through L.A., in hopes of making it to her last party before it all ends, running into an eclectic cast of characters along the way. And that cast of characters is amazing. Whitney Cummings, Nick Kroll, Fred Armisen, Bradley Whitford, Olivia Wilde, Helen Hunt, Colin Hayes, Charlie Day, even Paulie Shore shows up in this, as Paulie Shore. Um, and they're all in it, albeit briefly, um, in this upbeat end of days movie. Now, Zoe Lister Jones and Kaylee Spaney are the ones doing the heavy lifting here as Liza and her metaphysical younger self, respectively. So it's the last day of everyone on earth, and people, some people, it's shown, have the benefit of their metaphysical younger self with them. And that immediately makes this, to, for me, something that I'm, I want to watch. And, and something that compels me to see where they're going to go with it. Um, I found it to be very unique uh, and very original. Um, their chemistry, Zoe Lister-Jones and Kaylee Spaney, it, it, it's so perfect that you actually believe that they are the same person at different ages. It's so wo wonderfully done. Lister-Jones co-wrote and co-directed with um, a man named Daryl Ween, and the result is tremendous. I hope they have other projects in the mix. I will watch them. Um, How It Ends portrays an entirely chill end to everything. And it's surprisingly positive. Um, and it says about a lot, it says a lot about our relationships with other people. And also it, it, talk, it deals with the impact that our younger self has on our older self. Um, it does. It, it's one of those what would you do? Movies in my mind. It makes you think about what you'd do. If you knew that it was all going to end, who would you contact and what would you say to them? Um, and what would you do? It's, it's really interesting. One of the things Liza does is make a gigantic stack of pancakes and she doesn't pour the syrup on the pancakes. She fills a rocks glass with syrup and she eats her pancakes and she drinks the syrup. That's tremendous. I'm not a big pancakes and syrup guy, but that was fantastic. I, I loved this movie. Uh, it was it was lovely, and um, I immediately I was 15 minutes into it, and I texted uh, my daughter and and said you need to watch this. And I think she watched it that day, and she said that was wonderful. Um, so sometimes I'm right. All right, number two is Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, and and please 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 more well written murder mysteries, please. Fewer comic book movies, fewer Indiana Jones, fewer Jurassic Park, fewer all of those things, more murder mysteries. This is the second of, I hope, many Knives Out mysteries, and I think it's just as good as the first one. Daniel Craig is the only one returning as uh, Detective Benoit Blanc, and he's fantastic once again. I hope he plays Benoit Blanc as many times as he got to play James Bond. Um, 
Since it's a murder mystery, I'm not going to go into any detail at all. All right? You should watch it. If you like murder mysteries and if you liked Knives Out, just watch it and you'll, I think you'll love it and I don't want to spill any beans. Um, the cast, they always, Ryan Johnson does a great job uh, collecting a cast that works so well together and and there's there's you know there's enough character development to satisfy people who want character development. Kate Hudson, Dave Bautista, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., Madeline Klein, fantastic. Keep your eyes peeled for Hugh Grant, Serena Williams, Ethan Hawke, Natasha Leone are all in tiny yet pretty hysterical cameos. Um, I know who did it. Ryan Johnson did it, and he did it again. So good job to Ryan Johnson. And that was number two on the list of the best films that were screened here in December of 2022, which brings us to number one. And number one, also from 2022, speaking of doing it again, let's talk about Jordan Peele. Let's talk about Nope. Um, he's made three movies. Movie number one from 2018 is Get Out. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, and it won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. Movie number two from 2019, Us, which is one of the creepiest doppelganger movies you will ever, ever see. Movie number three is Nope. I'm anticipating when the uh, Academy Award nominations are, are released next month, um, this will be on it somewhere. Uh, due to the nature of this and all of Peel's films, once again, refrain from giving out any details. I'll let IMDb handle this brief synopsis. The residents of a lonely gulch in inland California bear witness to an uncanny and chilling discovery. And that's all you're going to get out of me. And that's all you need to see and see it. If you like horror, if you enjoyed Get Out and Us, you probably have already seen it. Um, one more thing about Nope, Jordy is a, is just nightmare fuel, full out high octane nightmare fuel. Keep your eyes peeled for the birthday party. And that is going to be it. That's our top 10. That's our bottom five for the month of December. And that puts an end to all of the film viewing in 2022. Thank you so much for being here along for the ride. And I hope that you're hopping aboard the Cinema Wellman wagon again for 2023. And you'll be with us for the, uh, as we try to watch pretty much everything that we can. Um, next up, I'm not quite sure uh, which way I'm going to go. Um, that movie guy who says he's not a movie guy uh, recommended a, a, an episode topic for me, and I am going to go for it. That might be next week. It might be the week after that, but that's coming soon. Um, check us out. Read the blog. Uh, you know, watch us. You are watching or you're listening, and I appreciate that. Follow us on the Instagram and the Twitter, and we'll see you next time. And until then, take care.